Greetings, greetings, greetings once again, my uh, teleconference brethren. God bless you and thank God that we are able to have another teleconference service. We had a lovely day today um, down at Peckham. Wonderful service we had down there. The presence of the Lord was there and we were blessed. Praise God. God is good. And you know, we just want to give God thanks for His goodness. We want to give thanks for who He is. He is altogether lovely. He is the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley. Praise the name of the Lord. So God bless you today as we are going to go into the word of God. But, you know, we just want to think about the goodness of God, his mercies, his love, his grace towards us, long-suffering, patience, and all the great attributes that God has done. We want to rejoice in him. So before we do, we're going to have a short prayer invite the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless your wonderful name. You are worthy to be praised from the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same. Take full control, Lord, of whatever I do and say today, Lord, and bless the heart of the hearers, those who are coming on later, Lord. We pray, bless bless those who are here. Lead us on to, to victory, Lord. Have your way, we pray. We give you praise, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen, amen, amen. amen. So God bless you, my brethren. We're going to go straight into the Word of God. And um, we're going to look at Psalm 139 this evening. Um, uh, If I put a topic, I would say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, thou knowest. Lord, thou knowest. And I'm just going to read from verse 1 to 14. Psalm 139. Amen. This is a psalm of David. You know, I really love the psalms that David writes. He's, he was so sincere in his writing. And he was so deep that he understood who God is and how great the God he, he who called him, how wonderful this God was. And he in all the psalms, he lift up God, he praise him, he glorify him, and give him all the praise. So I'm going to read from verse 1, Psalm 139. It says, O Lord, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising. Thou understand my thoughts, my thoughts are far off. Thou compass my path and my laying down. Thou art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? 
or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy right hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. Hallelujah. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou possess my wings, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and thy and that my soul knoweth right well. Praise God. <clears throat> this is an awesomely powerful psalm written by David who God called from looking after sheep to become the king of Israel. Hallelujah. And it just says that when the hands of God is upon us, there's no limit for us. There's no limit. When our ways please the Lord, there's no limit. God opened doors what we don't even what we can't even imagine. And that's what he did for David, who was one of Jesse's son. And he was to be considered the least among Jesse's son. Yet God lifted him up and made him not only king of Benjamin but king of Israel. So it just tells us when we love the Lord, when we serve the Lord God will open doors. He will open ways. He will make ways where there's no way. He will plant water in the desert. He will make. Uh, he will. He will do the impossible for us. And so we know this God. And David knew and realized how great his God was. And so he wrote this in acknowledgement of his greatness, of the great God, the great I Am, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He who created the heaven and the earth. He who created not only the heaven and the earth, but the universe and everything. All the stars. All the galaxies. Everything that exists, that we see. And even those things we can't see. This great God. Imagine how great God is. So David said, O oh Lord. Oh Lord, Thou hast searched me and know me. So, you know, and it's wonderful to know this great God who created heaven and earth. We could have a personal relationship with Him. We could always connect, we could connect with this great God. You know, soldiers sometimes, they have their generals and, you know, their supervisors and their chief. And sometimes they can't even connect with them. And Jesus is the chief of all chief. He is the author of the universe. And we can connect with him. David says, talking to this God, he says, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. So God is so great that he knows us and David realized that God knew him. God could read his heart. God could know what he was thinking. And so is God with all of us. And we have to have that acknowledgement as David did say, Lord, thou hast known me. Lord, Lord thou hast. We are not a stranger to God and God is not a stranger to us. We came from God. God created us. He molded us. He fashioned us. He breathed him. He gave us life. And so many things. He gave us eyes to see, ears to hear, 
mouth to speak, feet to walk, hands to do, to do all manner of craft. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. So he went on to say, Thou compass my path and my lying down. Thou art acquainted with all my ways. So that is God. He compass our path and our lying down. When we sleep, He's watching over us. And we believe, we know that He's watching over us. Thou compass my path and my line down. Thou art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest altogether. So how great is our God. And how marvelous he is. And how awesome God is in wisdom, in knowledge. He knows everything. This is what the word says. He's omniscient. God is. Our Lord is omniscience. Omniscience means he knows everything. There's nothing that he doesn't know. And thinking about it, the Bible says that even the hairs on our head are numbers. God Almighty know every hair on our head. He can number them. He knows them. He's so unique. In knowledge. He says, Thou, verse 5, Psalm 139, verse 5, he says, Thou hast beset me behind and before. Thou hast laid thy hand upon me. When the hand of God is upon us, we are protected. When his hand is upon us, it doesn't matter because if we remember what David went through, when Saul, the king of Israel, wanted to kill him so many times. Saul tried with all his power, all his might, because when he realized that David was in favor with God, he was, his spirit was turned away from David, and he wanted to slay David so many times. Saul wanted to slay David, but God protected him. David said, "Thy they are laid and laid your laid your hand, you laid your hand up on me." Hallelujah! When God's hand is laid upon us, it is well; all is well, because His hand is there to protect us from every danger, seen and unseen. His angel come past about. The Bible says, "The angel of the Lord come past about them that fear Him." And David, for sure, had the fear of God. And that's why God was there for him. So David went on to say, such knowledge, to understand who God is. He says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. And if we think about how great and how powerful God is, and if we think of all his wonders, from creation until now, the hands of God has been upon his people. And he always bring his people back. When they strayed, so many times Israel strayed away from God and turned away from God, turned unto idol, and he stretches his hand out to them still. So it shows that our God is a merciful God. He is a loving God. He's a, he's a God. He's a God that forgives when we come to him, when we call upon him. He's merciful. His grace the mercies endure it forever. Psalmist says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endure it forever. And if we see how when Jesus came to earth, we could see the mercies and the love of God in the man Jesus. We could see the compassion that emits from Jesus when he was on the earth. That everywhere he went, he was doing good. He did so many great miracles. He fed the multitude. He gave the beatitude. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. He opened the eyes of the blind. God don't God didn't the plan of God was not for any man to be blind. The plan of God was not that any man should be deaf. The plan of God is not that any man should be lame. That's not the plan of God. That is the plan of the devil. And so when he came, when Jesus was on earth, he, he corrected all the devil had done wrong. 
in that many that were blind, many that was lame, came to him and were healed. Those that were possessed with devils came to him and he cast out the devils. Because it's not God's plan that we should suffer. But sin, that's why it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life is, the gift of God is eternal life. When David looked at how great God is, he said, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot, under, I cannot pertain unto it. That's why, he, that's why when Jesus gave us peace, he gave us the peace, which the, the apostle says, the peace he gave us surpassed human understanding. The love that God had for us, has for us, surpassed human understanding. The knowledge that God has given us is beyond our understanding. He that stretched out the heavens, he that numbers the sand upon the seashore. So look how much sand is on the seashore. Even to go to one single seashore and look at the amount of sand. And God numbered them all. God knows when a bird falls from the sky. God knows everything. So he went on to say, David went on to say, in um. One Psalm one thirty nine verse seven it says, "Whither shall I go from Thy Spirit, or whither shall I flee from Thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, Thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, Thou art there. Where? How can we?" Be our absent from the Spirit of God. Where shall where can we go that the Spirit of God will not find us? Where can we run? Where can we ascend or descend? Whither shall I go from that prison? The, the, the Psalmist David had a good understanding of how who God was. He has an understanding of of his omniscience, knowing all things, his omnipotent, being all powerful, and his omniscience is omnipotent, he realized that God was all powerful, all knowing, and his omniscience, meaning that his presence everywhere. David had a full understanding. So he said, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Where or whither shall I flee from that presence? And if we think about, you know, the 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 um the patriot Jonah, when God called Jonah and said, "Go to Nineveh and cry against that city." And when Jonah took a ship that was going to Tarshish, which is not in the direction of Nineveh. Because he thought he, he didn't, he, he disobeyed God, and he ran away. Because he was saying that God will may for, God may, will forgive the people if they repent, and then he, thinking about himself, feel that he would be embarrassed if God did not destroy the city, and so he went and took a ship to Tarshish. And he's, I think he. Jonah was trying to hide from God. So he took a ship and then he went down into the bottom of the ship and made his bed down there. Couldn't hide from God. Because God knew even before he took the ship to Tarshish that he was going to take the ship to Tarshish. And God could read his mind. But God said, yeah, all right, you go. You go, take your ship to Tarshish. I'll, be, I'll, meet, I'll, be there. I'll meet you there. So on the way to Tarshish, God caused a wind to rage upon the ship. And the men tried to throw everything out of the ship to empty the ship. But when God means to do something, nothing can stop it. And God gave 
Jonah and Oda go to Nineveh and cry against the city. And Jonah disobeyed, thought he could hide from God. But God found him in the bottom of the ship. And when the ship would not steady, the shipmaster wondered who there was that person in the bottom of the ship call him up and when they call him he says is it you that caused this to happen to us and he confessed that he, he served God and he knew that he displeased God and so he said throw me overboard because this came because of me and they threw Jonah overboard into the, sh into the sea into the deep ocean, they throw Jonah into the sea. But because God is merciful and loving and kind, God did not desert Jonah. God did not desert him. God had a big fish to swallow him up. So you see, God, God is everywhere. His presence is everywhere. His power is everywhere. His wisdom, knowledge is everywhere. So Jonah realized he couldn't hide from God. And while he was in the fish belly, he repented. He called upon God and God heard him. Whatever it is we do, remember, call upon God. Amen. Call upon the Lord. Jonah, call upon God. And it was three days in the heart of the fish. Can you imagine how Jonah must have felt to be in the heart of the fish, in the fish belly for three days? You wonder, how did he breathe oxygen? How did he get to breathe? But God made it though. God made him to survive three days in the fish belly. And then God himself command the fish. Hallelujah. God commanded the fish to go to Tarshish and spew him out. Hallelujah. But when we think about our great God, it is amazing. It's, it's, it's amazing how God is and how God works. It's just, as, as David says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I, it is high. I cannot attain unto it. How great, how wonderful, how great our God is. And then, you know, then we realize this great God is wonderful and is loving, is patient and is kind. And all he asks us to do is to serve him. That's all God asks us to do, serve him in spirit and in truth. That's not much to ask for the great I am, the great God. It's not much to ask. Serve me in spirit and in truth. That's all God asks us to do. Walk in my statutes. Obey my commandment. Now, <clears throat> we have to sometimes put ourselves in God's in God's space because you know if we, many of us have children and if we have children and we expect them to be obeyed, obedient to us. I mean, if they are our children, we do expect them to be obedient. If they are under our care, we do expect them to be obedient. So it's no different than God asking us, His children, we are His children, to be obedient, to serve Him in spirit and in, spirit and in truth, to love one another with the love of God. So I went on to say, it's a wonderful psalm, it says, if I take the wings of the morning, David is saying, and I dwell into the uttermost parts of the sea, uh, this is like Jonah now, go into the uttermost part of the sea to go away, to hide from God. He said, even there. So this, this psalm is a fulfillment of what happened because Jonah went to the uttermost part of the sea to escape from God. He said, even there thy hand shall lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, if I say, surely darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be like light above me. And that's the power of God. When night comes, we see darkness, and we need a candle, or we need a light, we to see. But God, 
the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the altogether lovely, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, He that came down to earth in the form of a child born of the Virgin Mary. He says, if I say darkness shall cover me, if we say darkness shall cover me, even God, light, night, is as light. There's no darkness. There is no darkness in God. Darkness does not exist in God. He says, even the night shall be light above me. Even the night, God shall bring. And sometimes when we think about it in a natural sense, sometimes when our life becomes gloomy and we become, we we, we, we we overshadow with cares of this life and our, 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 our life becomes darkened and, you know, we, we have also, we are in despair. Whenever we are in despair, God is never in despair. Whenever our days become dark as night, God is there, He's the light. He says, Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. No darkness in God. And the place we, we are going, you know, some like says, I know where I'm going. I know. Joy bells are ringing. Happy children are singing. I know where I'm going. I know. The darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. David could understand God. He knew that God had power over darkness. Darkness cannot stand before God. Darkness is never good. Darkness is not of God. He created the day and the night. But darkness is not... I mean, if when we go to heaven, there will be no night. There's no shadow in heaven. There is no shadow. There's no, there's no darkness. There, there's no night. Heaven is an eternal day. It's an eternal... Jesus himself, God himself is the light. We don't need a sun in heaven. We don't need a sun that rises in the east and, and, this, and set in the west. There's no time. So, God is the light. He lights up. He illuminates heaven. He illuminates the universe. So, David went on to say, Thou hast Possess my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Every one of us who were born, God covered us in the womb. God had a plan for us. And whatever we win, whatever we go through in this life, whatever we go through in this life, let me, us be assured that God knew everything that we were going to go through. God has written his people out like a book. He knows us. He knows us before we were conceived, even before we were conceived in our mother's womb. And when we were conceived in the mother's womb, He covered us. He wrote us. He knew what we would go through. Thou hast possessed my ruins. You, you know, the ruins is like you know you riding a horse. And you hold the reins, okay? So once you have the reins, you have control of that animal. Once you hold the reins. So he says, thou has possessed my reins. So God has possessed David's reign. He's possessed our reign. He's holding us there. He's keeping us the way he wants us. And he will turn us to the left. He'll turn us to the right. If we allow him, he will guide us to a better day, to a brighter day, to a blessed day, to a, when he will turn our sorrows into joy. David once said, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord deliver them, deliver him out of them all. 
So sometimes in this life we go through tribulation, we go through troubles, but God is there to deliver. He said, Thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Now he went on to say, I will praise thee. Psalm 139 verse 14. I will praise thee. I will praise thee. Because for, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And, thy, and that my soul know it right well. I am. You are. We are. Fearfully and wonderfully made. If we knew what made our make up our very body, the body, the, the blood and the blood cells and the amount of blood cells that we have and, you know, the, the thing that cause us to see, the things that cause us to hear, you know, if we have problem in one part of the body, the whole body is like falling apart. You know, we can, it, it, when we are well, it is beautiful, it is wonderful, but if one part of the body start to give problem if we begin to have a, a, a headache or we, we begin to have an eye ache or ear ache or, or something or some chest ache or some 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 sort of thing we, we cannot feel good we cannot feel good but yet God has made us in a way that the body can recover itself the body can fight against discord and things that happens to us. We are made, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And my soul do it knows right well. Fearfully, wonderfully made. We don't understand how our body works. And, you know, if we start feeling any sort of illness or whatever, we run to the doctor because we don't know how our body works. But God knows because he made it. And so we can call upon him if things are not right. And we know that he can, he can fix it for us. He can fix it for us. And Psalm 98 if he hears this psalm, it says, Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand, his holy arms, has gotten him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness has he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He has remembered his mercy and his truth towards the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Every corner of the earth has seen the salvation. Every corner of the earth has seen the power of God. If people don't accept it, admit it, and serve God, it's not that they haven't been seen the power of God. It's not that they have not been blessed. Because even when we fall asleep and we wake up in the morning, we know it's because of the grace of God. And we should say, thank God. I'm alive for another day. Many people went to sleep and didn't wake up. But God has caused us to wake up every day. Every day. He has kept us. His hands has been upon us. Because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. His right hand, the psalmist said, his right hand, his holy arm has got him the victory. What made God powerful? What made God great? What made God the awesome God that He is? What made Him um, super above every, every, every creature? Because He's holy. And there's power in holiness. He's holy, He's righteous, He's just, and he's true. His right hand, his arm of holiness, has gotten him the victory. And this is why the devil could not overcome him. Jesus went 
and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness and came out of the wilderness and the devil tempted him. The devil tried to overturn God when he came out of the wilderness. He knew he had not eaten for 40 days and he te tempted God. If thou be the Son of God, turn these stone into bread. Hallelujah. But his right hand and his holy arms gave him the victory. He said, man shall li not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. His right hand. David took, the devil took him up on the pinnacle of a temple and said, if thou be the son of God, cast yourself down. It is written that he shall build up with thy right hand, lest thou cast thy foot against a stone. And it and Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. His right hand and his holy arm got in him the victory over the devil. Every time his right hand and his holy arm got in him the victory. The devil did not give up. Sometimes the Bible so resists the devil and he will flee. He came back to Jesus and took Jesus and showed Jesus all the beautiful things of the earth. All the splendor. And said to Jesus, all this I will give you if you worship me. Hallelujah. But Jesus, the only wise God, his right hand and his holy arm got in him the victory. He was wise. He said, Thou shalt serve the Lord, worship the Lord, and him alone shalt thou worship. His right hand and his holy arm got him the victory. And because he got the victory over the devil, he has given us that victory. We have the victory over the devil. That's why, this, that's why Peter, the, the, the apostle saying, We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Jesus has already put the devil down. Bury him, step on him, walk on him. Because his right hand and his holy arm gave him the victory. Oh, give God, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy, enjoy it forever. And think of how awesome God is. And he was thinking about, Isaiah spoke about the power of God in Isaiah chapter 40. And from verse 22, Isaiah said, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. This God, he sit upon the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants thereof as grass happens. Oh, praise God. He sit upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants, every man that liveth. You see, some people think they are so powerful, you know. They, um, you know, you have these powerful rulers and leaders of the countries and they really think they are powerful. They really think they are something. I mean, look at Russia, look at um, Canada, look at the people, um, um, those who control uh, the, the Senate in America and all those things and who make all these decisions in the UK, they all think they're powerful. They all think they're powerful. But I believe the word of the Lord that he sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants, it doesn't matter if you're a king, queen, prime minister. It doesn't matter what position you hold, president, um, king, queen, whatever. The inhabitants of this earth is as grasshopper before God. They are like grasshoppers. So all the big talk in the eyes of God because God sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And he went on to say, he stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain. 
We're talking about the earth. He's talking about the heavens. He's talking about the universe. He's talking about how many light years it is to go from one star to another. He stretched it out. This God as a curtain. He spread them out as a twin to dwell in. So he stars, he stretch out and stretch them there like a tent for him to dwell in. Nothing much. That is the great God we serve. And you know, the thought I have is just for us to realize the power that is in God and the great God that he is and how, you know, we, we don't consider how much he deserves our praises, how much he deserves us to, to give him the praise and to the, give him the glory and to lift him up. Because when we do go, when we do get to heaven, it will be at 24, it will be all, it will be praising him all, uh, uh, there's no night, so we'll praise him all day. It will be praises, 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 praises. The angel will sing praises, we will sing praises. Continually praises. No wonder the psalmist, the writer says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And when we praise God and when we glorify Him, we become strong. So he says, he stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spread them out as a tent to dwell in. He bring the princes to nothing. The princes, whoever they are. You know, and if we think about in the past how many great um, Pharaoh and all, um, Herod and all those men, uh, of all who, when you hear, you, when you hear the voice, when you hear about them, you, you fear. The people fear because they hear fear, or they hear about Herod, and they hear about all the kings of the earth, you know. But the Bible says he bring the princes of the earth to nothing. He make the judge of the earth vanity, and all those high judges who have so much power, he make it the earth to vanity, the judges of the earth to vanity. How great is this God that we serve? How awesome is this God that we serve? How great is his name? He is worthy to be praised. And if we look at Job chapter 9, and um, from verse 5, it says, um, which, talking about God, which move at the mountains, that they know not, which overthrow them in, in his anger. The mountains, he moved them and overthrew them in his anger. We shake the earth out of, its, of, out of our place and the pillars thereof tremble, which commanded the sun that it raise it not and seal up the stars. This is the God we serve. This is the awesome God we serve. He moveth, we move at the mountains. So where there's a mountain, he can, uh, he can remove it. And he says, and Jesus says that if you have faith, as much as a grain of mustard seed. So if we have faith, as much as a grain of mustard seed, we can say to the mountain, be thou removed. Jesus said it. And be cast into the midst of the sea. And it shall be done. Do, do we have faith? Do we have that much faith that we could say to the mountain, Be thou removed. Do we have faith? When we do have that understanding of the power of God and the power that, we, that He has bestowed upon us, and when we have that faith, we can say the mountain, be thou removed. Alright, so it may not be literal mountains as such, but sometimes things that come upon us in life and things that we have to face in this life becomes as mountain. Sometimes when we find maybe ourselves in some dire circumstances and when we find ourselves in a, in, a, in a place where there don't seem to be any way out, it's going to be like a mountain. But we have to have the faith that no matter what it is that comes before us, that we need to have that faith to say, yes, whatever it is, come what may, I can move this mountain. 
through him. That's why Paul says, the apostle says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We can do all things through Christ, through Jesus, who give us strength. And they know not which overthrow them in his anger. We speak, we shake the earth out of its place, and the pillars thereof tremble, which commanded the sun that it rise not, and seal up the star. Oh, what a wonderful God we know, what a wonderful God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. He commanded, he talked to the sun. He said, Son, raise it not. Rise you not. He sealed up the stars, locked them up, which alone, he says, as in um, Job chapter 9, verse 8, which alone spread out the heavens and treaded upon the waves of the sea. And you know, God has got a love for us because he know what he made. You know, if, you, if we make something and that thing that we made is valuable to us, we will take care of it. We will cherish it. If we make anything and we call, if we have anything that is valuable, we'll take it. God has us as his jewel. We are his jewel. We, because we are made in his image, we are, we are represented of him. We are represented of God in the earth. That's why, that's why the devil told Eve and that if he eat that fruit, he be as gods, knowing good and evil. The mere fact that we do know good and evil has made us, God has put his mark upon us, and when we have turned to God, God has accepted us as his treasure, and God will, God will remove mountains for us. God will overturn kings and kingdom for us. We have to believe and we have to know the love of God. We know nothing. The songwriter says we know nothing until we know the love of God. So in closing, the psalmist says, I am fearfully, fearfully, wonderfully made. We are fearfully wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, O God, and my soul know it right well. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to close, slow down, close, closing down here now. Um, Pastor McGann, are you there? I see Miss Pastor McGann, our dear pastor. Um, God bless you. Um, we're gonna close now. I'm just gonna. Anybody have any requests? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My brethren, let us hold fast <clears throat> to God's unchanging arm. God is good to us. He has done great things for us. We are off. We are glad. And all God wants for us to do is serve Him. Give Him the praise. We can't praise Him enough. We can't thank Him enough. We can't glorify Him enough. He is worthy of all our praises. So let us continue to serve Him in spirit and in truth. Pour out our heart before Him. Our God is wonderful. Um... Sister Rose, God bless you. Bless you. I ask you to give us a short testimony before we go, go close. Yeah, first of all, what God has done you done for you. Today. And I also give Father's Day to all the fathers that are on here. And I pray that you have a very blessed Father's Day. And I pray that the Lord will bless you all and put you in his care. And I pray that you will be blessed in your family. And I pray that you will be blessed in your 
The Lord has said that it's great things have done for me. His mercy endures forever. And I just want to do God today. You know, there's so many things that I've gone through in my lifetime. I mean, I was even two and a half, actually. I could have died that day. I was in the hospital. I wasn't eating. I was very, very skinny. I just couldn't keep the weight on. And the church back then, my parents were very young. I've got very young parents anyway. They were really young when they had me. And the church came together and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. Even one of the church graduates occasionally, they will stay in the hospital. And I told that when I was young back then, they would find me running outside in the yard. You know, I was troubled with something. And they prayed for me and God has healed me that I'm even living to see this age that I am a, an adult. But really, when I was younger, I could have died a long time from the age of two and a half. And I'm still here today to give, testify that God has saved my soul. You know, and I'm so grateful to God. I, when I think back of that I'm even here to even call myself a child of the King, a child of God, that I've been redeemed and I've been bought with a price. I just feel so blessed because I could have been someone who's in the world at this age, smoking a cigarette, you know, doing all kinds of nonsense out there in the world. But thank God, thank God, my life might seem boring to many, but I can only say that my life consists of church, home, and maybe my husband will go to a hotel away in the countryside. That is my life. And I'm very happy with it. I do not feel like I'm in a situation where some people might say, oh, but, you know, if I was in the world, I would love to maybe go to the pub. I'd love to go to my pub. I don't want those things. I don't long for those things. I don't long for a cigarette. When, when you come to the Lord, he changes you bit by bit. Some people may they change straight away. Some people, it's a process. And I can say today that, the things I did before, I don't do them no more. The places I used to go, I don't go there no more. And it's because of God, nothing to do with any good in me. Nothing to do with me at all. But when you call upon the name of Jesus, when you ask him, ask him every day, purge me, Lord. If you see any iniquity in me, wash me, Lord, inside out. If there's any wicked way in me, if there's anything that will separate me from you, Lord, any darkness, Lord, mm. don't touch me with Touch me, Lord, with your anointing, please. Cleanse me, Lord. Lord, take total control of my life, Lord. Do what you need to do with me, Lord, that I will be holy and acceptable, that on that day you will not say, you part from me, I know you not. Who wants to go through say that they're a child of God, but they're malice in maybe, that they've got grudge, that they've got jealousies, whatsoever they've got. They don't ask God to purge them every day. They just think, because you gave your life, you went to the baptism pool. You are saved. No, it's for working for every day. We have to ask God to die from the fridge. None of us are perfect. None of us. So when we call ourselves this name called Christian, it doesn't mean you just go to church even and you come home. It's a working process. It's not easy being a Christian. You have to work it every day because there's always going to be some human being out there that runs you up the wrong way, up, wrong way. And you have to forgive me. You have to have mercy. You have to be slow to anger. But I just thank God that I have been redeemed. And it's not easy, but I work on it every single day, and he has cleansed me. He has made me whole. As I said, the things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I've been to the nightclub mm -hmm. before. I don't go to them, and I don't want to go. I don't miss those things. I remember smoking a cigarette. I don't want the cigarette. I literally can't even stand it. I can smell it if someone's down the road, and I literally can't imagine I was one of those people. I don't even know if I could ever do that. Oh, I did it, but I did. But God has cleansed me, he's purged me, and I ask every day. But it doesn't mean that I'm perfect, but every day we need to call upon the name of Jesus, ask him to cleanse us. And if we have anything with anyone, make peace. Make peace. It's not worth it. There's no one out there that can you be drugged on what they did this. They did that. No, I'm not talking to that person. No, I'm not going to forgive them. Is it worth Christ comes? What are you going to say to him? What is that person worth your salvation? Is that person made of us? Oh, made me oh, worth my salvation? No. So give oh, quickly. Be so to anger. Mm -hmm. And in my feelings, I'm just so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God. I am so grateful to Jesus. He saved a wretch like me. Mm. I just want to thank him. I want to glorify his name. I want to lift his name upon high. And even if I sound like I do not care. When people are out there going to these silly concerts, looking at these lost people, these millionaires, pop stars, or whatever they want to call them, or rock stars, or whatever, but they're looking more stupid, you know, and if I could do that back in the day, go to a nightclub or go to a concert, 
to see someone who's not even saved. I could definitely look stupid and act crazy for Jesus. I do not care. I love you, Lord. You saved my soul. And you're the one that judges me. You're the one that can destroy me inside and out. No man can do that. They can only destroy the flesh, but they cannot destroy my soul. And these are my few words. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 God. God bless you, Sister Rose. God bless you. God bless you for your testimony. The Bible says we overcome by our testimony. So continue. Continue. Hold on to your testimony. Because God will always turn your test into a testimony. Amen. And we know what you've been through in this life. Sister McLean, God bless you. Give us a word. Give us a short word before we close. And then ask Pastor, Pastor Foster to close us. So give us a little word. I know you've been through a little thing with your grandson being in an accident again. Another grandson being, oh my Lord. This lady has been through so much, but God knows. God knows, God knows. Give us a short word, Mr. McLean. Hallelujah. Um, Pastor Foster, not yet. Pastor Foster, I'll call you after. I just want to greet all the wonderful brethren in this platform tonight. Greetings, I greet you greetings. All the, greetings. All the fathers. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. Amen. And God bless Thank you. you. Praise God. It's a privilege for me again to be in the company of you, my brethren. Praise God. God is good. And God is Amen. faithful. And He is worthy to be praised. Amen. And He's worthy to be exalted. He is the God of the universe. He is all God by himself. Praise God. You know, it is so good to trust in Jesus and just to take him at his word. Mm -hmm. You know, sitting here, um, I just keep silent, you know, I'm just here listening on uh, mm. um, the, the messages of Brother Thompson, you know, how he was exalting and he was encouraging, you know, telling about the goodness of the Lord and we, we made, we are wonderfully made. Yes. Praise God. We are made perfect in His life yes. and in His image. And He has bent down so low, stood so low, and breathed into our nostrils That's right. the breath of life. And the life that we have does not belong to us. It belongs to Almighty God. Mm. And as I listened to Sister Rose, and she was given her testimony about her life story when she was much younger she could have died so early but god has kept her praise god because god has seen god has seen her heart and god has a purpose for her life and so the devil didn't want to kill her but the devil could not kill her because she was born for a purpose and as I sit here and look to her and she was saying she doesn't miss the, the club and she doesn't miss, you know, the, the out there, the palaving and those who are, you know, enjoying the world because she has enjoyed a better, a better Amen. life than Jesus. Because any man being Christ, we are a new creature. Amen. Praise God. And if you're serving God, you cannot serve God and serve the world and please the world. Amen. Praise God. Because once you are changed, you, you, once you have changed your life completely, everything in you has to be changed. Praise God. And you know, I always love to listen to Sister Rose, you know, because when every time she gets up to exalt her, give her testimony about her life, it draws me closer to, closer to the Lord. As a young woman, she has given up everything. She has sold out the Christ. Mm. And you know, and that helped me to go more deeper in the Lord. You know, today I just went to church. I just sit in and said, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I didn't feel like going anywhere. So I'm just sitting and um, just want to have some quiet time with the Lord because I need to hear from the Lord because you know, so many things are happening in um in our family circle and I don't know what, I don't know why, I don't know. I just can't ask them why, because I know these things are not of God, they are from That's right. me. 
That's right. You know, each night in every way to put me down to steal my joy. But I know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm -hmm. And you know, when the devil said no, my Jesus said yes. Yes. And I was hearing and I was thinking and I was thinking and I, this morning, I had a dream last night and I can't remember the dream. But it wasn't a pretty dream, but it's like I was in this water and the water come down and me, but there was a, a there was a wall there, even though the river come down and me, there was a wall there. And, you know, and there was another a rocket, like a tree, tree wave thing. And I was in the water. And it's like I was washing and the water didn't take away my clothes. Somebody was calling me and said to me, where is your clothes? I said, my clothes are still here. I still have them. And I will cut out of the dream, and I was thinking, I don't know what dream it is. And anyway, I was praying this morning, waiting at fire. My one, my granddaughter in America, the one that um, had her sister died in Jamaica, and she was saying, oh, "More pray for me because at my workplace, I'm having problem, and you know because she went just in America for about maybe one and a half years, she hasn't um." sought out herself as yet, but anyway, she's working, and I think it's jealousy, and it's uh, our own people, and she gets frustrated, and she came home, and I said, well, you can't be able to leave your work, not because you're in a crisis where, you know, everyone is looking to you, even though, and anyway, I said, um, I'm going to pray for you, and I know that God is going to see you through, and he will make a way out for you. And, you know, I was on fast. And I went, I, I broke my fast at 1 o'clock. Um, because the normal, I never used to fast so long because of, because I'm diabetic. It's always affected me. But now I see I'm just doing it gradually. And I see where I keep it out even for 6 hours from 11 until even after 3. You know, I've been, you know, taking it gradually. And you know something, and I had this morning when I was praying, I said to the Lord, Lord, I need to come, I need you to draw closer to me, and I want to draw closer to you. God, I need anointing, that double portion of anointing. I want my spiritual eyes to be open. I want mm. to turn it to the back and the third. And you know what? I know that something is missing out of my life because I know that I want myself, I'm not praying the way that I usually pray, even when we have the first corona virus, I'm telling you, I get dreams, vision, and it's just as I get it, and I deliver it, it's the same way, I remember, I got a vision by a young lady, and I saw her in Dallas, Negra, and she said, Mom, I'm a dream of vision, call me, and even now I don't call her, and I got another one, oh my God, and I said, I keep losing my dream and my vision, what happened? And you know what the Spirit said to me when I was standing at the sink? Your prior line needed mending. Oh, I said, oh my God. Oh God, my Lord. My prior line needed mending. Oh my God. Oh God. I know. Because I know that I am not praying the way that. I should have prayed. My friends are broken down. And that's why the enemy is attacking my family. But no, I admit and I know that God is going to take me back to that level and that standard that where I was yes. before that I had seen. Yes, amen. Behind and before that I have things that I normally see and God always show it to me. And, you know, I want to be more rooted and grounded. Yes. And I just want to just humble myself in prayer and ask the Lord. Because, you know, as James said, anyone lack knowledge, let him ask That's the right. Lord. That's right. So give me liberally. And, you know, and my, my aim and my determination is to stay all unto God and changing hand in spite of what we see. What I hear, what I know, what is going on around me, nothing will shake me, yeah. my sister said, because I made up my mind to go God's way. And I just said, goodbye world, goodbye world. Yes. I know that. And you 
know, I know that God will help me because He blessed with good intention. Yes. And I also thank you, Brother Chancellor, Amen. for this uh, this opportunity that we can all voice our opinion and pray one for another. Bless you, ma'am. Bless you. And the Lord. We no man is an island. We, we Amen. all need each other. Yes. You know? And encourage each other. That's what we are here for. Yes, not sir. to bring down no one. Yeah. Not to let anyone feel discouraged. Not to talk in a one like we borrow. Mm-hmm. Or to show and That's right. That's right. That's that right. Them out. You know, we are here to call. If we make a mistake, you know, we can correct in law. Amen. And that's what the word of God is. Yes, you know, mm. encourage each other with love. May the Lord bless you all. My brethren. Bless you, ma'am. Bless you. Bless you, my dear sister McLean, ma'am. I know the path you've taken. I know the, you know what the devil has been doing, and how much you've lost over the years because of the, the devil. But I know that you're holding on strong, and. Um, the, the, I always remember you when I when I think about you. Always the word of God said, "Many are the affliction of the righteous. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all." So that's your word. Many are your affliction. Many are your affliction, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Continue, be continue trusting, sister. Continue trusting. Pastor Winston, I want to hear from you. How are you? God bless you, um, Pastor McGann. Let's see. Let's all hear you. Hear something from you before it go to bed. I just came in from church. All right. Well, I was, I was, I was um, turning on the, the uh, I've turned on the, um, the tip program from uh, the road. So I put on mute because I just came in. You're a busy man. We know you're a busy man. We yeah, understand. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Want to hear from you? Today, Father's Day. Yes. I just feel let us sing a song. Yes. Please, please, okay. please, of okay. course. Heavenly <laughs> Father, Jesus. I appreciate you. Yeah. Amen. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Amen. I love yeah. you. I love you. I bow down before, before you. Heavenly Father, I, I appreciate you. Amen. Spirit, I appreciate you. Holy Spirit, I appreciate you. I love you. I love you. I adore you. I bow down. Holy Spirit, I appreciate you. Appreciate you. God, I appreciate you. I love you. I love you. I adore you. For you, I appreciate you. Today we can say we appreciate God. Yes, sir. We appreciate you. Yes. Yes.
the Lord has prepared is truly heaven. And this kingdom rule over all. This kingdom is rule over all. Yes. This is God kingdom, God world. That's why we appreciate God for being yeah. alive. We appreciate him as our Father. Yeah. He's the best Father, the kindest Father. So we appreciate God for his goodness and for his love and for his tender mercy. I want to say, oh, give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his mercy and forever. Let the will of the Lord say so, but we leave us from the end of the enemy. We thank God for Jesus. Father, we thank you. Son, we thank you. Amen. Trinity, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, go. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being one of life. The parliament come on in so that's why today we celebrate Jesus. And I celebrate no man. I appreciate Father. That's right. I lady. But God is above all. God is confirmed in my life. So today I'm celebrating Jesus. Amen. Today I'm celebrating Jesus. I'm singing Jesus. I'm clapping Jesus. Amen. Father. I appreciate you. I, I adore you. Down before you. I appreciate you. Father God in three persons. Father, the Holy Ghost, the Trinity in one. One God, one Spirit. One way, Amen. one, one, one. So we are one tonight on this room, on this platform. And all go unto one place, and all of the dust, and dust we shall return. Yes. We are going to one place when they die. We are not here to stay permanently. We are not here to stay permanently for the rest of our life. We are going to, we are going to pass into our Father. He is going to see us too. While they go, what they are going to right now. And in God, we pray and pray for us. And where he is, we will be also. You can to love him and can to pray the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you and that must be your word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Amen. 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 Yes. We appreciate it so much today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very appropriate. Amen. Very appropriate, sir. God bless you, Pastor Megan. Um, Father's Day indeed. The Father, Heavenly Father. And uh, we all say today, Heavenly Father is our Father, and it's Father's Day, so all glory belong to Him. Amen. All glory belong to Him, because He's the Father of all. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, right appropriate, Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. I love you. I adore you. I bow down before you. Heavenly Father. He is the Father of all. He is the Father. Today is His day, Father's Day. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Winston. We we'll catch up with you on the other side. Um, yes, sir. Um, um, now we can ask um, Pastor Foster to give us a short word and pray a close-up person prayer. Pastor Foster. Okay. Okay. He that dwelleth in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We thank you this evening, O Lord, because you're God and there is no other God like you. Amen. We have heard the testimonies, we have heard the cry of your people. Many of you are going through all times, are afflicted. But we pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord God, you'll comfort them this evening. You'll put them under the shadow of your wings, O Father. Amen. Let them overcome every form of obstacle that the enemy will put in their way. Mm. Father God, we thank you for your lives this evening. And we thank you for this service that is able to bring people from all areas of life mm. to come and speak and tell us how they're going through. Lord, we know the enemy is up forever looking for hearts to steal their, their souls. Mm. But we pray in the name of Jesus that nothing contrary will happen apart from the gospel will be preached and people will be saved 
and testimonies will continue to be given because the God we serve is a good God and he never fails us yet. As the song says, he never fails us mm -mm. yet. Thank God he never fails us. Amen. And so we put each and every one of us on this platform tonight under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit. And no obstacle, no devil from hell will be able to stop the blessing that God is going to pour into the In the name of Jesus, we pray that things need to break every chain. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Amen. Thank you for your blessing. Hallelujah. We pray that you continue to keep your people safe in these times of so much need. And we thank you this evening for this moment, Lord, because in you is our strength. In you is our faith. In you is the power that will heal and save. And so we give the glory, the honor, and the praise. And in the mighty name of your holy son, Jesus Christ. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise his name. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Yeah. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, God bless you, Pastor Foster. God bless you, Pastor Winston, Sister McLean, PT, Sister PT, Sister Rose. God bless everyone and everyone else that are on here. God be with us and have a great week and have a great rest of the Father's Day for all the fathers. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. God bless everyone. God bless you all and everybody else. God bless you. God bless. Bye for now. Bye. God bless you all. God bless everyone. God bless. God bless you.